Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Reach, and I'm here at Ape Bay headquarters with CEO Sam Wilson. Thank you, Zias. Yeah, and uh, Sam, it's uh, been a little while since we caught up. I think last time I talked to you was in uh, Southampton at your analyst event. Uh, how things been going? Good. Uh, we yeah. just closed our June quarter, which we'll report to Wall Street in a few weeks. Business continues to hum along. Lots of activity, lots of stuff, lots of innovation happening. Obviously, AI is a big talking point. Um, contact center innovation, CX, all those other things. You can see it. We've been putting out a lot of press releases lately, just with the, just a lot of innovation been flowing out. All right, Sam. Well, at the event, you talked a lot about the, the shift in the business away from these standalone silos to more of an integrated UCAS, CCAS, CPAS platform, which I think the long overdue in the industry. We've sold these things separately for years. Uh, how's that process been going? Where are you, where are you with that? Absolutely. Like, I'm, we're really impressed with what the team's been doing. We're not done with that full transformation yet. We've got really UC and CC together. We've got CPASS and bits and pieces coming together. And we've got admin really progressing forward. And we've got a lot of work we still need to do there. But for example, our RCS announcement into Contact Center, first Contact Center provider to fully integrate RCS and RBM into the Contact Center. We're real believers in that messaging stuff. Um, we, our recent announcement of Meltwater and social listening into the Contact Center our ability to integrate an external campaign manager into our dialer has been a real success. And you know all the standard AI stuff of uh, agent assist and um, bots and multiple bots and all those other things are all, all progressing. So I really like where we're going as a company with that notion of, hey, we're a platform. We give you best in breed technologies, whether we build it ourselves or we get it from someone else but it all feels like one native integrated platform, data sharing across the platform, analytics across the platform, all those kinds of things. Yeah, really and, like that. And what's interesting about that to me is you've really uh, expanded the TAM of the number of people that can use your product, right? When you think of UC and C historically, CC agents, UC knowledge workers, right. right? Which is really, when you think about it, a very small percentage of the overall workforce, right? We have you know, all the frontline workers and you, you talk, you know, talking about the clinicians and things like that that use the product. Uh, those individuals um, really live off these integrated workflows where I may be talking to a customer or an internal ploy. And so, so the, the whole concept that I want to shoehorn them in to like UC or CC just doesn't work for them. Yeah, and it's <clears> funny, <throat> probably the fastest single growing product is our Engage product which is kind of contact center features for non-agents. Um, but it's those things, right? You're a field service worker. You may be talking to a customer or taking an internal call. You're a nurse. You're on call dealing with on-call patients, but you're also inside of a clinic doing nursing rounds, right? And so yeah. those, I mean, but I think it's what you said earlier though. It's taking it up a level and saying, what these all have in common is their business communications, either internal or external, their business communications. And we too frequently, get enamored with the product, not the outcome. The outcome is a human being needs to speak to another human being, a great form of communication, voice, or text, or chat, or whatever the case may be, and, and let's get rid of the labels and put on the artificial barriers, and let's just make this clean and easy, and let's make it really AI enabled so you can get insights out of it. Yeah, and I want to talk about AI, and I think, before we talk about some of the customer facing features, uh, you know, we, and we talk a lot about that in this industry, right? Every show you go to, uh, AI for this, AI for that. But I actually think one of the bigger impacts, which hasn't really been talked about a lot, is how it's allowed companies like yourself to move faster. 100%. Right? Yeah, and so how have you been using AI internally to change the way you build products, service your customers, things like that? All right, so I'll give you a couple, I mean, I've got 10 or 20 of these. And, <laughs> and, uh, Joel Neeb is our Chief Transformation and Business Operations Officer. Like we have a person dedicated to completely transforming how we do business on the back of AI. So just know I'm giving you a few examples. We have many of them. On the front end, like our coders are using co-pilots, coding co-pilots, Claude Code or GitHub Copilot, and we're seeing a pretty massive improvement in productivity and speed of innovation mm -hmm. when those things are being used. On back-end systems, we use a program from a company called Clarity, it's a startup somewhere here in Silicon Valley, that scans every contract and does what RevRec people used to do, better, quicker, faster, and we now, instead of statistically sampling contracts, every single contract is getting reviewed by an agent to make sure that it's SOX compliant, RevRec compliant, those kinds of things. Our SOX controls now 
are being built with AI in mind. We of course have an agentic AI service support agent, FAQ agent, those kinds of things. So across, we use agent assist, we do payments, like we have all kinds of stuff, yeah. right? Because I do believe as a tech company, we need to eat our own dog food, drink our own champagne, whatever is appropriate <laughs> these days. Um, but we need to use this up. Like I can never stand in front of a customer and say, hey, you should implement a technology that I haven't implemented first. Yeah, no, that's fair. And uh, so give me an example. Like if I came to you as a customer and say, hey, Sam, we'd really like this feature. Uh, you know, historically, that would take months sometimes, right? Right. But yeah, now, now what's it taking you? We can build small, you know, we can build features in days. I mean, we now do three to 4,000 code changes a month. It's hard to call them releases anymore because sometimes yeah. they're big, sometimes they're small. But think about that, three to 4,000 per month. Yeah, well, that's, that's one of the big theses is that in software, uh, the whole concept of release cycles goes away. It, it's right? completely gone away for yeah. us. Yeah. We're CI, CD throughout the, the system. And like, I love telling a story that we had a, Let's let's be gentle. Okay, occasionally, every once in a while, we push out a bug. So we had a bug in the UK uh, a couple days ago, which is, for some reason, when we made a change, it wouldn't accept GB, Great Britain. It only would accept UK. Yeah. Huh. So the customer calls and says, "Hey, we're having this problem. Uh, can you know, like, we need to log a ticket." And the agent says, uh, "Hold on a sec. Okay, I'm on the phone with the engineer. We'll have a code release to you in 30 minutes." 30 minutes, 29 minutes later to be exact, we pushed out a code release, solved that problem. Yeah, so he over-promised, under-delivered. Yeah, exactly. Right. Under-promised, over-delivered. Yeah, 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 by, by one yeah, minute, by right? One, yeah. But 30 <laughs> minutes. I mean, what, like, it takes him longer in the old days to fill out the ticket, yeah. pass the ticket in Jira to someone else, yeah. have the product manager review it. Screw that, this was a straight up code fix. Yeah. Boom, done. Now, uh, on the customer side, your product's now loaded with AI features, yep. right? Note taking and things like that. And uh, uh, how, what's the reception been like for customers? Are they nervous about it? Obviously, it's a new technology for a lot. Um, I, I don't think they're nervous about it. I think everyone understands AI is here. I think some of the more advanced stuff they get nervous about because they there's a level of trust you have to have in the AI, especially when you get to agentic, right? When it starts taking actions and starts doing things, you need to make sure that things it's doing yeah. don't violate rules or whatever. I think the hard part is putting it all together and putting it into production. You're using our meetings, you're getting summarizations, how do we get that? You're using our calls, the summarizations, they're going back to Salesforce, different summarizations, different levels, different roles. Like one of the things that we find with summarization is if you specify the role, the role you specify gives a completely different sort of summary, right? And so- Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah you yeah, say, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an executive, the summary I get is different than I'm a coder, Yeah. and, and what came out of this meeting. And so a lot of times we're, we've, re, for example, I'll give you a great thing that we've redone. In our meetings now, we actually don't do the transcript where it's really appropriate for a human being to read. We've gotten rid of all the line breaks and whatever. We've identified all the speakers. We've done it all in a straight text file, TXT, TXT file, perfect for ingestion into an LLM. Yeah. So we're actually assuming now. People aren't gonna read those, yeah. No more are you gonna yeah. read a transcript. What you really wanted is ready for AI to read it appropriately. Yeah. Yeah, or the, you just want the summary. That's right? right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that makes sense actually. And then, um, uh, you know, there's this thesis that uh, um, AI is going to take jobs, and I think it's going to change a lot of jobs. Have you seen uh, companies use it? To, uh, obviously, I'm sure some of your customers have reduced headcount, but how are they changing the business? Not just looking at it as a cost-cutting method but as a way to like transform their organization? It's, like, it's, a, good, it's a good question. Yeah. Um, because look, what we really do see- Because that's really where the better yeah. upside comes from. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. right? What we really do see is we do see some customers changing the CX experience. Yeah. And, and you know, I'll steal an example from you to give you the credit, right? You talked about how Disney has really changed what they consider their contact center to be, right? We are seeing customers now generate more revenue out of their contact center, higher customer satisfaction out of their contact center, not view it as a cost savings. Right now, the analytics that we see is the number of cases being delivered to human agents is down, the average call time is up, and the average time spent inside of the AI products by end customers is increasing. So I feel like we're getting the right change of the dynamics to drive more, better CX and those kinds of things. And then we're also getting, so if you look at our AI orchestrator product or our customer journey product, 
We're getting companies that have better ability to track how a customer comes through their funnels, how they come through their channels, where they're spending their time, so companies can come back and further refine and improve their CX solutions. So the interesting thing um, uh, about uh, you know what you're doing there is, first of all, I think you're automating a lot of things that people don't like to do. Right. <laughs> right. So no one's going to really be upset about that. Um, but I think the the way we've historically measured contact center effectiveness, first call resolution, average handle time, actually doesn't make sense anymore. Right. I'm a hundred percent a believer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 100% believe in what you're saying. Because you think about it, like, if it's a marquee customer, the fact that mean time to resolution was longer, I think in the olden days, mean time to resolution was typically infinite because you never actually solved their problem yeah. and you lost them. Yeah. Today, you want a specialist on the phone with them for an hour to solve their problems and actually win customer loyalty at that point. Yeah. If you come in and you truly solve a difficult problem for a customer, that's your moment to win customer loyalty today. Yeah, and I would think like if you were, uh, you think of a premium brand, Porsche, Audi, or something like that, if the goal was, you, you, you told the customer service people, your goal is to get the customer off the phone as quickly as possible, that's totally counter to the way they work. Right. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like we shave four minutes off, it's like. But, but, the, yeah, but yeah. think about how contact centers for so yeah, long, yeah. they were viewed by business leaders as a cost center. Yes, yeah. Right? They were not viewed as, hey, one in three will leave a brand they love after one bad customer support experience. Mm -hmm. They weren't viewed as, the, this is the place we deal with our customers after they've become customers. And I think that's a core thing that needs to evolve and change. Yeah, and so if that change is happening, um, you, you're now, you know, most of the way through your transformation of bringing you know, your communications platforms together, What's next? Like when you think about what eight by eight is, where is it going to be in a couple of years? What do you? How should people think? Okay, about it? the next wave. So we we continue to push that platform yeah. out. We continue to get more pieces of best in breed that you can easily get implemented in production. And then lastly, insights. Right. So if you start to stitch all that together, and you start to like one of the, if you think about where AI phase one maybe I don't know like I'm some better person than me can articulate this. If you think about phase one, where was the data already digitized? Well, it's in your CRM system, et cetera, right? So you can get all like, when was an order placed? That's, this has been digitized. You know what historically hasn't been digitized that well? What are all our customer interactions? What's yeah. been the customer journey? Well, especially the voice side. Especially the voice yeah, side. Yeah. And voice is making a big resurgence right now. We see more activity around voice than we actually see around chat right now, yeah. which is different than maybe 18 months ago. And so, I think what you're gonna to start to see is a tremendous add-on to insights, which is, hey, we just lost. Let's just say hypothetically, I'm a United Service, you know, United 1K member, and I stopped traveling, right? We could look a year ago, two years ago with AI to say, well, at this date he stopped booking tickets. But it was really hard to say at that moment, hey, anywhere around here, did he deal with one of our contact centers? Did one of our employees deal with this individual? Did, is there a reason? oh, wait a minute, he had talked to the contact center five days before his travel dropped significantly. What was said in that call? Yeah. What was the journey he was on? Wait a minute, he had a really bad experience. We had canceled the flight and left him and stranded. Okay, now I need to step up, reach out to him, apologize, and this is a hypothetical maybe, apologize. Well, it's certainly for an airline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, apologize. No offense and, to the airlines. And, and, come back, yeah, yeah, yeah. and come back and see if we can rescue yeah. what historically was a loyal customer. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good point. And, uh, and so for you though, uh, you're not the keeper of all things, no. right? And so when you think about how you work with ecosystem partners and things like that, that's gotta change, right? Yeah, yeah and yeah. so one of the things we're trying to do is lead among our ecosystem partners that hey, if we all silo the data amongst ourselves. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. Yeah. So we're gonna to agree to exchange data. And so if you look at our te technology partner ecosystem, we generally say like, we'll share the data with you, you share the data with us, and we'll come out ahead. So take a simple thing, agent assist. So agent assist, one of the key vectors is in the end, did the customer's problem get solved? Typically, we need to pull that out of a, a customer orchestration layer, or a customer journey layer, right? Like, hey. When, when we did the follow-up survey, 
and we use Qualtrics or our own surveying tools, what, what did the customer say was the problem solved? We then feed that back, but we need, actually need to feed that back to our, a partner in Agent Assist, or in one other case, our own Agent Assist products, et cetera, and feed that back in. And so the thing we're trying to do with our ecosystem and our platform is that data is inside the platform, it's shareable, it's usable to drive those insights. Yeah, well, I'll, and uh, I guess I'll wrap up on this then. Uh, the, uh, there's a phrase I always use, right? Everyone knows that good data leads to good insights. Silos of data lead to fragmented insights. Yes. And that is the worst. And we've lived with that historically for years. And the people that lose in that case, the employees, because they actually wind up being the integration point for those silos. Right. And now you're you're dependent on the skill of a person and the inherent knowledge and things to stitch all that data together. So if you can do that and with your partners, I mean, everybody wins there. And, and I believe business communications right now is one of the last frontiers yeah. that hasn't been brought into that inside age. Yeah, I think that's true. In fact, I think business communications historically tends to trail other parts of IT by a couple of years. And I'm not picking on the communications industry. Part of that is just the criticality of what we're dealing with. Yeah. You know, contact centers, nobody wants to, you know, kind of be first out of the block and have a bunch of problems along the way. So, um, and, and historically, yeah, yeah. it was just a separate part of the IT department, yeah. right? You had like, analytics was driven by things that were digitized, right? So your analytics that you're, you're you know, think about um, Tableau or whatever the case would be, they would rely on top of a database or your CRM system, or Snowflake. It's a warehouse of yeah. information, right? Business communications was that thing off to the side, right? Yeah. And now what we're trying to do is pull it in, make it that first class citizen, get it, and then be able to put that world-class AI technologies that are being developed against that, and truly build eight by eight to be a platform company that has high services, high NPS, high reliability, Etc. so that we can provide the insights to the, you, the business buyer, for you to get the outcomes that you're trying to drive in your business. So if there's one thing I'll leave you with, my favorite saying right now is the world used to be vendor simplicity, customer complexity. Yes. Yeah. We sell you a widget, hmm. your responsibility to integrate it. The future is vendor complexity, customer simplicity. Yeah. We'll deliver you an outcome. In fact, uh, NPS, I think, is a metric that isn't talked about enough, you know, when you, companies get evaluated, you look at the tech, tech platform, cash and bank, stuff like that. NPS is really a big uh, a differentiator today. And I don't, I don't think it really, except for the companies with really high NPSs, gets talked about a lot. Yeah, we've seen a yeah. massive yeah, improvement. Yeah. Now, we've seen a massive improvement because we've invested, right? We've yeah. invested in AI, we've invested in people, we've invested in business processes. We've seen a massive improvement the last two years in NPS has been a big source of investment for 8x8. Yeah, well, that's great. Then. Uh, and uh, all right, Sam, uh, always appreciate the time. Uh, great having an update on where you are in the transformation of the company. And uh, uh, I'll pop back in in a quarter or so and see where you are. You're on, and here's my promise to you. Okay, we'll never replace you with AI, at least for the next couple of years, <laughs> yeah. right? I still get my insights from you, so thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be a few more years before I can take all of the industry data yeah. and, and get an AI to give yeah. me the answer. Well, you know, I'll. Uh, as long as you wait until I retire, then I guess I'm okay. Well, you're on. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Thank so, you, everyone. Uh, so on behalf of Sam Wilson, CEO of 8x8, I'm Zias Caravalli from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.